a final look at regions comes down to the region inspector, which is here on the left. It can be expanded and minimized by clicking this arrow. The region inspector gives you more options regarding the currently selected region. You'll notice that you get different options here depending on whether you've selected an audio or MIDI region. We're going to look purely at audio regions here because we'll look at the inspector for MIDI regions later in the MIDI chapter of these videos. The region inspector offers you a few extra functions for your regions. First of all, you can choose to loop them. This allows you to repeat your region without having to make lots of copies of it. This function can also be accessed for the current region by hitting the letter L. By default your region will loop forever, but you can restrict it to a certain number of loops by clicking on the top dark area of the loop region to cut off the loops. And you can drag to extend the loops out or make fewer of them. Next you can add a very precise delay or negative delay to your regions. This means that your region will play slightly later or earlier than it appears to in your arrange page. This is usually used if you've done some recording with a latency on it. Or perhaps if you're trying to correct a performance where the timing is uniformly early or late. You can select discrete values with the drop down but if you click and drag, you can make more finely spaced changes. You can also change the gain for each region separately. Gain's another word for boosting or cutting the amplitude of playback. Essentially, this will turn the volume of a region up or down. So if you have a region that's too quiet, you can turn it up using this. You can also achieve the same thing through automation, which we'll look at later, but it's nice to have a choice of different methods for the same task. The bottom four parameters are the ones that I use the most. These allow you to set volume fades on your audio regions. I almost always give every region in my project a fade in and fade out, even if it's a small fade of only a few milliseconds. Why? Well, because if you don't fade in an audio region that contains sound, it can cause clicks and pops, where the playhead transitions from a complete digital silence, where there's no region, to an area with some sound. And surprisingly, even if the sound at the beginning of the region is very quiet, as it is here, an audible pop can still make its way into your music. The number in the fade parameter box represents milliseconds. In other words, a value of one will give you a fade that's only a thousandth of a second long. But often a fade that's only one or two milliseconds is enough to get rid of a popping sound. Of course, you can set longer fades too, which you might use as a creative way to introduce a new instrument or sound into your arrangement. The curve parameter lets you give a positive or negative curve to your fade, which can sometimes sound more natural than a straight linear fade. The fade out parameter works in the same way, but it has extra options for making crossfades. What's a crossfade? Well, we learned earlier that a track can only play one region at a time. If I overlap regions, then the playback will jump between playing the two different regions back. This is a track in which I'm using some sound effects from electronic gadgets. Uh, so here's two different sounds. If I overlap the regions, and I'll just remove the fades on both regions. You can hear that the playback jumps between the two. It 
can sound a bit nasty sometimes. However, if I select the first region and set a crossfade, the playback should now transition smoothly between the two. This might be useful if you're editing together two different takes of a performance and you need to seamlessly stitch the two takes together. Or if you're making electronic music, it can be very useful for transitioning between different sounds. All the functionality that I've described with fades can also be accessed by using the fade pointer tool as well. If you prefer to use the mouse rather than type values into the region inspector. Now there's quite a bit to take in about the region inspector, as well as about regions and the pointer tools in general, and you won't remember everything immediately. It takes practice to become familiar and fluent with these tools, and everyone develops their own personal style of using them. However, as long as you're aware of the general layout of the tools and the basic concepts behind them, you'll discover how to use them in your own way through experimentation. So don't be afraid to play with these tools to find out the best way of working for you. Now we're going to move on to look at the exciting world of synthesizers, samplers and drum machines as we explore software instruments and MIDI.